In this video, we're going to go over working with grids in 3D Coat as well as axis handles and working planes. I'm first going to go over axis handles and how you can access them in 3D Coat. Now, most 3D applications will have some type of a widget in the lower left hand portion of the screen to give you some indication of how you're oriented in 3D space. In 3D Coat, if you go to the navigation bar and click on this little icon, it'll show you the axis handles and these are intended to be relatively thin and unobtrusive so they don't really get in your way while you're working but you can always turn them on turn them off if you like you can also access it from the view menu here under axis and you can assign a hotkey to it as with some of these other options we may look at so you can always hit the end key on your keyboard that's EMD and assign a hotkey to it if you like and you can see they are color coded for X, blue for Z, and green for Y. Now you have the option if you want to have only one or any combination of these handles visible. So right now we have all three. You can see here under separate axis you can turn off the ones you may not need. Okay, so we only have the X and the Z axis that we're working with. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to go ahead and hide those. And we're going to talk about working planes. Now, sometimes it may be helpful to have a second plane visible. So you can go to grid placement and choose which one you want to work with. And as soon as you start to navigate about, you'll see it pop up in the viewport. And as you can see, it will remain static, but we do have the option to have 3D coat determine based on the angle or the camera angle. We can have it actually switch the axis or the working plane axis. So let me turn that off and I'll leave this default grid in place but I can choose auto placement and so now up to a certain angle okay that will stay in place but then as I get close to 90 degrees all of a sudden 3D coat will change it on the fly okay now if you want to use these for snapping purposes then you would go back to the view menu and choose snap to 3D grid, not to 2D grid. We're going to look at that here shortly. So let's try and create another layer here. I'm going to switch to voxels. Maybe give it one level of resolution. And I can use the 2D paint tool. I'm going to use right mouse button. I chose the paint with dabs draw mode from the e-panel so that I could single click to create the object. I'm also using a sci-fi type brush alpha and you'll notice it's snapping to the work plane but it's not yet perfectly aligned down the z-axis or perpendicular to the work plane and that's because the tool plane is not yet oriented correctly but I can do that by coming over to the tool options panel and choosing which axis I want to place it on. So I'm going to click Z and now when I click you can see straight down that z-axis so now not only does it snap to the working plane but it's properly oriented along the chosen axis and I can change that axis at any point in time I can also choose any one of the other selection types such as the three or four point method and it would snap those points to the grid if I have snapping enabled I'm going to switch to a different brush alpha and you can see how this is a pretty versatile way of working allowing you to use a simple brush alpha to quickly add objects into the scene with some level of precision.
hit the space bar and I'm just going to click clear to clear all the voxel objects from this layer. And again, if you want, you can work with more uh, than one grid. You can see you can work with three, but obviously this is probably a bit too distracting. So you typically would work with just one or two. So let me point one other benefit of this working plane. Sometimes you want to work in orthographic mode. Uh, let me choose something else here. We go up here to the navigation bar and click on the little Q icon. That will put you in orthographic mode. If you click on it again, it will put you in perspective mode. And you can toggle this on and off by hitting the 5 key on the number pad. And you have different camera shortcuts here. So let's go to a front view. I'm going to hit the 5 key. If you go into orthographic view, you can click all and it will kind of center it up. And sometimes you may want a grid here. In most 3D applications, you probably would have an orthographic view with grids that working plane allows us to do just that and I can use a singular plane like this or I can choose auto placement and this will allow me to quickly switch to any particular view and it automatically has a grid that I can use if I want uh, certain levels of precision and whatnot. So now, let me go ahead and hide that. And turn auto placement off. And you also happen to have a 2D grid and this is specific to the viewport. It will always stay static as far as its orientation. Right? The working plane is applicable to working in 3D space, whereas this one is strictly 2D. It's oriented along the uh, viewport. Okay, so as you can see, you have a couple different widgets here. If you zoom in and zoom out, pan, and even rotate. You can reset it by clicking this icon here to retarget it. Now you do have the option to right click and use a 2D gizmo, but we're going to cover that separately in another video because this extends over not only a 2D grid, but also uh, working with materials and mass and so on. So I can right click on this little center point and it's gone. The 2D grid and the 2D gizmo are designed to give you much more control than a standard working plane, as you'll see. Instead of snapping to a 3D grid, you can snap to a 2D grid. Now once you have a grid aligned the way you want, and should you want to store it, 3D Co. allows you to do that by creating a camera shortcut. You can do this for multiple views, manipulate the grid per view, and create a camera shortcut to store it. 3D Co. will not only save it for work in this particular session, but it will store it so that anytime you open this file back up, you can always access those camera shortcuts. Okay, so you can choose to add a camera shortcut here, and the hotkey for that is Control Up Arrow. Okay, the next one, switch to the previous shortcut, Control Left Arrow, next shortcut, Control Right. Okay, so I'll go back to a front view. Turn it off. Now, the last thing I want to mention here is that you can assign a unit measure for each grid square by going to the voxel menu under define measurement units, and you can change the unit of measure as well as the scale in the voxels per unit. Okay. So with that, we'll bring a conclusion to this look at working with grids, axis handles, and working planes in 3D code.
Hope it helps, and thank you for watching.